Yeah, Vishal, we talked uh, last month about your uh, request for uh, expediting the special TRV for people who are waiting for the spouse. Uh, and you wanted to discuss uh, some updates since then. Uh, what is the latest development? Well, uh, yesterday we did a, con a countrywide uh, protest. Okay. Because IRCC or the Honorable Minister is not uh, reverting to us yeah. or saying what measures would be taken either to expedite the process or approve our STRV. So we yeah. took it to the streets. I was personally in the Edmonton uh, uh, protest yesterday. Oh, Edmonton uh, on uh, yesterday? Yes, at Canada Place. Oh, okay, that yesterday is, uh, I mean, the, on Saturday. Correct. Okay, and uh, what what happened? I mean, what what was the uh, what was the development? What? Uh, yeah, so uh, we, we we had protests uh, in Vancouver, Edmonton, Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa. In yeah, how, uh, how many people came in? Um, so Vancouver, we had uh, well over forty people. 40 members come in, and those members that were not able to come in person due to health reasons or if they were spouses, uh, did a digital strike on uh, Twitter. And oh, okay. uh, Edmonton, there's about 15 of us on, on ground. Montreal was about 80 to 100 people. Toronto was about 40 to 45 people. And Ottawa was about uh, another 50 people or so members on the ground. I'm showing this on the screen. I think, is this the one on uh, posted by CTV News? Spousal Correct. sponsorship applicants trying to protest to be united with the I think this is the one. Correct. So that's for the Toronto one, yes. Uh, this is an August uh, 9th. Yes, I think maybe this was posted today. It must have been happening yesterday. So many people... Stop separating families, and I see a lot of stuff here. And uh, so, any um, any development in the Minister of Immigration uh, following this up, or somebody from their office? So we have had ever since I spoke to you the first time. We have had uh, total silence from IRC, IRCC and the ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday, for the first time, he tweeted out that. Uh, he, they are continuously trying to help us and innovate new ways, but the innovation only seems to be for different streams, not for the family sponsorship. Yeah. Although on the 8th, they deemed uh, immediate family as essential, they forgot to mention that uh, that was for countries that are visa exempt. If you yeah. require a visa, from the other country, so that only only enabled fifth, uh, people from 52 visa exempt countries to actually come in under that, but it left out everybody else. Like India, China, Philippines. India, China, Middle East, mostly, and if you look at it, it's mostly developing countries or what people ideologically say, the third world countries. Yeah. Okay, so what what is your what is your future uh, plan of action now? So we we have a House of Commons petition, mm -hmm. and uh, that is being uh, tabled by Jenny Kwan, NDP, Vancouver East MP. I saw that letter. Yes, I saw that letter which she wrote. She did an open letter, and even in her speech in Vancouver, she actually asked the honourable minister that with within he specifies that within six weeks, he tentatively or his ministry does reply. We are on our 10th week and no reply. We are being totally ignored. So that goes into the House of Commons and will be registered on the 16th. We have mm -hmm. about 5,000 Canadians that have signed that petition. The petition number is E2747. Um, if if they are members from this group that would like to get the Canadian partners to sign up, if they're going through the same um, <clears throat> the same 
dilemma that we are going through. And uh, we are looking, and this is where we we come, and we, we wanted to get your expertise. And uh, we are looking at a legal route that if we do not get yeah. any form of communication, what is it that we are able to do? For those people who do not know Jenny Kwan, uh, I'm showing on the screen, Jenny Kwan is also one of the committee members of the Standing uh, Committee on Citizenship and Immigration, besides uh, Michelle Rimpel and uh, other people, including uh, Randeep Sarai in Surrey, Vancouver, uh, Lower Mainland, and there are many other people also. Jenny Kwan is also uh, right there, unless she's a vice chair, I think. So if uh, Jenny, Jenny Kwan's letter is not... Uh, receiving any traction, um, I don't know whose uh, letter will. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes sometimes these lobbying efforts require sustained uh, effort and persistence. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the results come after a long time and it's not very easy. Uh, right now, the... But this is the, the folk, problem, um, yeah. sir, that we are trying to get our loved ones in before this second wave hits and then yeah. we go into another spiel of let's wait another five months or six months yeah right and uh, uh sure so so your your question to me is that uh should you hire a lawyer to uh do so the yes. lob lobbying for you uh so if we could, if the the group was looking to hire a lawyer if, if that's what is going to get us our reply because the silence is killing us. My, Mike, uh, my take is that uh, uh, when you go to any lawyer, the ask yourself, why, why will a lawyer be interested to do this for you? This is not an immigration application. This is not a visa outcome, uh, individual applications uh, that, that uh, is desired. I mean, this is, this is like a, uh, you know, like a class member, uh, you know, uh, you know, like a, uh, more than about 5,000, 10,000 people. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, you, you require, you, uh, you don't, you don't require a, a lawyer, you require a lobbyist, uh, somebody yeah. who can lobby. You know, if you, if you search around for a lobby group in Canada, um, uh, and then you can find out lobby, lobbyist firm, may possibly in Ottawa, and then contact any one of them and see if they can, uh, you know, if they can espouse your case um, to uh, to the to the right, you know, right people. Uh, you don't need a lawyer. You need a, a lobbying uh, effort because um, obviously the lawyers will charge you money, and I I don't I cannot uh, imagine that how will they charge you money on what basis because you know they need to have a a blanket approval action for all people, a large majority of your, you know, uh, members. Yeah. So um, uh, I, I think you need a lobbying firm, somebody who can who can pound this message every day on on the right here, uh, yeah. you know, day after day, day after day. That's what you need. Okay. And do you think the venue of going to human rights? Uh, getting no, it rights is it is a waste of time. This is not. This is. The human rights people will not find this as of uh, uh, quite sensitive nature, uh, you know, just to, to represent the case. Human rights uh, organizations and NGOs are interested to pick up individual cases where they think injustice has been done in a particular situation. Uh, mm -hmm. Yours is a, like a complete, uh, you know, like a, a group movement. So human rights may not be the right one. Um, okay. Yeah, you, you need somebody who can... Um, you, you need a public relations uh, campaign, you know, like a PR media frenzy campaign that that uh, ensures that your message remains on the mass media, on the mm. on on the social media, on the newspapers, TV and other things, you know, every day so that this this news does not get forgotten. And, you know, people people can realize this is the real issue on a daily basis. All right. Which I mean, we we you know we have done pretty well. You are we you have done yes, you have done. Yeah, I think the over, message is spreading. 
Yeah, we're in over, uh, like, we've had about 40 or 50 media tensions, like TV interviews, and it, it keeps increasing. Members are reaching out to communities, radio stations. Members are reaching out to, you know, any venue possible to get the message out. And the, the protest actually brought us a lot of attention. And um, we, like you said, what we want to, to see is what the next step is, because yeah. we don't seem to be getting the answer. If, I, then, if I were you, if, if I were you, I would reach out to Jenny Kwan one more time and mm -hmm. uh, ask her uh, if she, uh, what, what does she think of any uh, lobby firms who can, um, you know, represent your message on a, okay. on a consistent basis? And maybe she knows somebody, uh, maybe she can refer out, or, or if she reaches out to some lobby firms, that could mean a difference between, uh, you know, uh, between, the, between setting up a favorable terms and conditions for maybe payment and other remuneration. Mm -hmm. And would you know in the past, has any, have you used a lobby firm or do you know I what? No, no I, I have not. I've, I have mm -hmm. not uh, used any lobby firm. I, I never had to. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just, uh, for, I know, for example, right now, uh, because of COVID, a lot of migrants, uh, you know, like agricultural uh, workers, uh, your video is gone, I think, a uh, lot, of, lot of agricultural workers who are working in Ontario, they are facing pressures uh, based on you know how they they live in a housing condition, cramp condition, and they are they are getting exposed to COVID, and there are a number of media organizations and other people, not NGOs, non-profit organizations who are who are asking for benefit for migrant workers. Just go to Google and type migrant workers in Toronto, in or I think entire Ontario, and especially in Niagara region. Uh, there are some firms which I don't know who they are. There are some firms who are daily and every and and consistently asking for special benefits given to migrants workers who are working in fields. That is the kind of pressure you need for your cause. And uh, when you search for media reports about migrants workers facing COVID pressure, uh, you can you can identify who these firms are based on their reports on CBC News and CTV. And then you can uh, contact them directly and you ask them, would they like to, would they like to represent your cause? Absolutely. We appreciate the help. And um, I must say that you're the first person that actually listened to us and actually put us on the map. So well, we th thank you. Very, well, I appreciate you, and I, 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 I return my uh, my thankfulness to you. But uh, you know, I'm, as I said all, earlier, also in many occasions, I'm not interested in individuals. I'm interested in the immigration cause and immigration law, yes. and uh, anything that can happen, you know, through this uh, channel or through this uh, media platform, why not? Absolutely. And I, I am going to ask uh, one of the admins to see whether we could probably do a joint uh, interview with Jenny Kwan. Sure. Maybe one of the admins with you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you probably have better questions than we will be able to put out. Sure, no uh, problem. So that is something that I'm, I'm working on trying to get done. And um, so, so the thing is... Uh, you know, we now we have some direction and we can take it from there. And uh, thank you for the continued support. Um, you know, we we want members to join in. We do have um, a uh, GoFundMe page that's uh, going to. Yeah. And uh, members are all chipping in. So definitely we will look down this venue and absolutely, like I said, you know, one of the key things we got from you the last time was about Section 179A about the Haiti precedent. That's right. That's really, right. Yeah. really appreciate that. 
it it has become one of our major fighting grounds that there is a set president yeah there is a president yes mm -hmm. i i want to i want to show you the the example i told you about migrant workers i think you can look at the right. screen this is yeah. this is a organization based in ontario somewhere they they are uh, if you see on the screen this is mm -hmm. called migrant workers alliance for change and they mm -hmm. are fighting for the rights uh, and labor standards for migrant workers, including immigration benefits, so that they can become permanent easily, so that they don't have to, you know, stick to one employer. Uh, and, you know, something like this. I don't know who these people are, and I'm just going to click on find out, contact us about us, and see what these are. So, for example, take a look on the screen. Can you see this on the screen? Yes, I see it. Uh, migrant Workers Alliance for Change includes individuals as well as Asian Community Aid Services, Butterfly. Uh, migrant sex worker support, caregiver connection. There's a huge number of, uh, you know, look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, migrant solidarity network, FCG, FCJ, sorry, refugee house community, legal, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, so this is the kind of organization I think they have come to come through. So you need some, some coalition, something like this to bring uh, together, you know, uh, multiple people. Uh, to to go for and then you know make a sustained effort like this. This is what you need. I know it's uh, sounds daunting, but hey, you need something like this. And if you look click on the media, I think they are on the media. That's why uh, mm -hmm. I was showing them quite uh, is the media contact and stuff. So uh, this is this is what what I what you need. Absolutely, we appreciate the help, and oh, I just want to appeal again to everybody that's. Uh, you know, facing the same dilemma that we are and wants to be reunited with their spouses, please join the group, please sign our House of Commons petition, and uh, please do chip in. We are all volunteers in the group, and um, we are trying our hardest so that we can reunite and get this special TRV done. Yeah. Uh, there is one other question that I did have yeah. that one of the immigration lawyers uh, posted on Twitter. I forget his name, um, but he said that uh, when he looked at the term STRV, he thought, oh, well, you're looking at new legislation. And he suggested, uh, why don't you ask for an amendment on the grandparent program or the super visa program and ask for a spousal super visa for COVID, which will not require legislative change. What are your thoughts on that, sir? Well, my my feedback to this reaction is it's a, it's a well thought out uh, uh, idea, but no matter whether you um, ask for an amendment or you ask for a uh, you know, through a through parent and grandparent uh, kind of scheme, uh, it requires it requires approval at the from the very top. Uh, mm -hmm. What what they are saying is that you don't need a parliamentary amendment. You need something like a ministerial ins instruction. Uh, mm -hmm. A ministerial instruction is a, like a short time, uh, short term gap uh, provision to help and you know affect the policy in a, in a certain way. Uh, so a ministerial uh, instruction, uh, just remember that word. I think maybe I, I yeah. should show you what is a ministerial instruction so that anybody who's watching this uh, will know what I'm talking about. Let me, let me just uh, open up and let's see, sure. show you what that is. So ministerial instructions are issued by the office of minister when uh, as soon as the, there's a need, maybe, you know, they they will, um, you know, they, they will issue it and it's only for a short term. So uh, let me just show you on the screen for people who want to know what is a ministerial instruction. Uh, here you go. Can you see my screen? Say then. Yeah. Ministerial instruction in power of two, uh, two, 2002 provides the legislative authority for cancer and integrated issue special. Here it is. This is what mm -hmm. it is. Allows the minister to issue special instructions to immigration officers to enable the government to best attain this immigration goal. This is what it is. Uh, ministerial instructions are typically issued for a limited time. This is what it is. So you let the lawyer know, uh, whoever made this provision, uh, that ministerial instruction is what we are looking at. Uh, and uh, ministerial instructions for limited period of time and can touch on diverse range of issues from 
temporary resident processing to federal work, skilled worker and application take measure. So this is what you need. Correct. Make sure make sure you tell Jenny Kwan or anybody who's interested. You know, this is what we need. And yes. uh, and well, let's let's take a look on the screen. Maybe if we can see some example of president on well, exactly. ministerial instructions are always issued for, you know, ex express entry intake. But uh, take a look. Uh, ministerial instructions uh, for PR they have been issued for. Uh, if you look at the 7, 7, 14, 16, 23, so it has a number for startup visa for caregiver program, immigrant investor, venture capital, which is closed now, Atlantic immigration care, caregiver. So for different programs, they have issued uh, ministerial instructions, and this is what you need from the minister. And okay. uh, here it is. Yeah, that's that's what it needs. So you don't need a par parliamentary amendment because that will take time. I don't think anybody has time to go to... Uh, mm -hmm. to uh, effect an uh, immigration uh, amendment right now, but hey, this is what it is. Awesome. There, are, there, are, there are many ministerial instructions. If you just go to Google and type ministerial instructions, you can read, uh, you can read uh, one, any any one of them. I don't think there has been has been for temporary. Yes. Let me see. Let me see what else here. Maybe something is showing seven. Yeah. So for human trafficking, existing temporary here it is. Uh, let me just take a look at ministerial instruction number thirteen. Uh, Yeah, yeah, this is a good example. This is an ex extremely good example. Look, this was in 2014, mm -hmm. and uh, IRCC will not process any PR application or TRV application and will stop processing applications for which final decision has not been made if the applicant has recently been Ebola. I think this was an Ebola time when, you know, right. so so they they could not they could not uh, stop the processing of uh, visa application directly blanket but the minister decided for some time we will not app, not uh, take the applications from ebola affected country so they issued a ministerial instruction number 13 and this is what it is that's it do, do you do you see do you see the do you see how they issue the instruction for a short period of time and that's it and then they can stop after i think this was uh, you know um, I think for three months or so, within the last three months or so, and then they would they would later on when the situation got got normal, then they could remove the remove the instruction itself. Absolutely. Um, so, just one last question, sir. Yeah. Your your thoughts on the spousal sponsorship? Okay. Do you do you believe the system needs to be revamped? Well, this is a philosophical question, and that requires a. Uh, you know, you have to separate my personal, personal opinion from the goals of the immigration uh, yeah. itself. As as you know, the uh, the annual immigration plan of uh, of the government of Canada has a quota system on how much they can take in economic immigration, how much in family immigration, how much in uh, refugee humanitarian class. Uh, so they they have to work within that numbers. Uh, but mm. in in some unique cases, uh, the family unification is one of the goals of Immigration Refugee Protection Act, and they work within that goal to bring in spouses. But spouse, uh, spouse unification is one of the uh, fundamental, uh, you know, objectives of, of ERPA. So there's no doubt about this, uh, that, you know, spouse, spouse immigration and spouse unification must be facilitated at the, at the earliest and at, uh, at the least convenience to the sponsors. Mm -hmm. And I, if I remember well, IRCC also responded once to us on Twitter, and they're they're like, we are not, we can't ask our officers to deal with paper files. Uh, okay. So, well, when when was this? Asked? When was when did you see it that? It was it was a somebody. I'm I'm not sure whether it was an employee, but it was under one of their their tweets that they had put out, and we were asking questions. So either uh, somebody in general spoke out, but it wasn't IRCC themselves, okay. but they're saying that they're not dealing with paper files. Uh, one question that we have all had is that once our sponsorship uh, eligibility is done and this file is being transferred, say, for, for my example, my file being transferred to NDVO. Yeah. Uh, are you telling me that my 250 page application was physically transferred from Canada to Delhi or was it done electronically? 
my my guess is my best answer is that uh, most of most of the material on the, your sponsorship application relating to you and your spouse everything uh, they are electronically converted to digital uh, images and then they are presented to the uh, to the visa officer sitting at the NDVO and then they look at everything and I think uh, they literally I'm not sure about this. I do not know the answer that in each and every case they were required to see an actual paper. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I'm wrong. I think they may, they may, somebody who has worked in the visa officer or somebody, they can answer this question. I think I do not know immigration lawyers and consultants know the answer to this question. But my best guess is that uh, in, in a lot of cases, they have made uh, decisions uh, based on what the electronic images of the of the scanned file is, because when you send your file to Mississauga, mm -hmm. uh, they they literally cannot. Uh, I I doubt that if they are sending all these packets to different countries, uh, you know, I think I think they convert everything into a microfiche on the electronic, and then upload it to your file. And the visa officer at the last stage, wh wherever he is, I think he will be likely looking at those images and, and file uh, just to cross check and cross verify if at all somebody mm -hmm. needs an original maybe they can request it at the later stage but there's absolutely yeah. no need to get a real file real paper in his hands uh, so that's that's my that's my answer uh, but by but you know don't be intimidated by the fact that uh, uh, that whether the IRCC has tweeted that it they will not process paper files so your application will not be handled I think you, you don't have to be discouraged or dissuaded by, by that tweet. Okay, that is very good. I just also have a member that just texted in a message and uh, they're asking, is it public information in terms of how many officers, immigration officers that deal with spousal sponsorship are actually there across the country? Because she seems to think there's 12 of them. Who? The, one of the members. She got well, information saying there's about 12 officers. 12 officers work, working there in the New Delhi uh, visa office. We, we don't yeah. know. There, he may be right. I don't, do not know. But they can easily, if, if they are if they're a member of parliament, they can easily find out through access to information how many are working there. But it does not matter whether they're 12, 13, or 10, mm -hmm. or 20. Who cares? Uh, you know, the, 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 the main uh, the thing to understand is that I think much of the staff is is furloughed. Maybe they are not working full time on the on the cases, and uh, they are working at reduced capacity. So we do not know whether all of them are working on those files or not, or how many of, of them are working, and when will the full capacity come on board? We do not know. Okay. I think I think this is for the this is for the member of parliament uh, maybe uh, you know to find out if that helps. Absolutely. Uh, so I will. Again, like I said, again today, we're, I've learned so much and the group really appreciates it. We've, this little discussion has brought up our next step, actually. Correct, so, correct. So we, we, we have, in, in, today's, in today's discussion, you have learned two things. For, number one uh, mm -hmm. is that you need, you do not need to waste, waste money and time on an immigration lawyer. You need a lobbying and a PR firm, public relation firm, just like the example you saw on the migrants. And All the right. second thing, and the second uh, thing that you have learned today is that uh, you need to lobby for ministerial instruction, not an amendment in the law. So mm -hmm. uh, whenever you are talking to Jenny Kwan or anybody else, so uh, if they ask you a question, hey, what do you want? And you tell them, look, we need the minister to issue a ministerial instruction. It's limited for two months, three months, six months, whatever time, and that's it. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And uh... It's not wrong what they say on YouTube. You are the Guruji of immigration. Of <laughs> <laughs> who, who's, who said that? Who, who said that? I, I saw a comment on one of your, oh, your yeah. you oh. put it up. Yes. Yeah. People, look, pe the guru, people love the Guru of immigration. <laughs> oh, people, people love, people love seeing these epithets because they know I am mm. passionate about immigration. Uh, in my in my family, my wife and my children, everybody knows that 24 hours a day, I only uh, read immigration, I talk immigration, I eat immigration. I uh, whenever I whenever I go to in my Edmonton, I go to uh, for shopping, and 
I get so many people who, uh, while you're grocery shopping, they're asking me questions about immigration law, and that's all I care about. I am interested in immigration law, nothing more, nothing less. We appreciate your dedication, and we appreciate you sharing the information. And I, I hope this, had I known, all my cases would have come to you earlier. Uh, unfortunately, when we do start these processes, we don't know what we're getting into. I just saw the the video where you said, uh, you know, dig in, find out what your consultant is about, yes. who yes. they have dealt with. And these are things I wish I had done before placing my application. I will make that. I will make that video in English as well because I I made this in Punjabi because a lot of people want me to speak in Punjabi there, but you know I will make uh, that consult that consultant video has been quite popular and and getting messages, so I will make this uh, again uh, the same message in English as well so that many other people who, I who will do not uh, listen in Punjabi maybe they can I'll reach out and share get it. On the group if you share if you send me the link for today and if you send me the link for the one in English I will share it on the group. And everybody, including the admins, appreciate your help. Okay. Thank you very much, Vishal. Take care. And uh, let me know if something else is going on. If you talk to Jenny Kwan and if they want to talk, maybe I'd love to uh, discuss Absolutely. the issues with her and then see if maybe uh, you know, something can come up. But two, two keywords today, ministerial instructions and lobbying firm. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Vishal. Take Thank care. Send me this link so I can share it on... Uh, on the group page too. Sure. It Thank you. Let Thank me do it. it doesn't let me do it from your YouTube video. Oh, it I doesn't. To... I'll send you. I'll I'll send you. I'll send you the link. I'll I'll uh, probably within an hour or so. Absolutely. Appreciate okay. your help. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.